Hey, what is going on everybody, and welcome to Fantasia, home of the Melodious. My name's Azalea, and today, I'm gonna be bringing you guys a post-duel commentary on the Fantasia non-meta tournament season one. Now, this tournament took place in December of 2018, and currently, the second season of it is ongoing. So those videos will be coming out after the tournament ends. Now, if you're interested in participating in future Future Fantasia non-meta tournaments, please check out the Discord server, link to it is in the description down below, and stay tuned inside the tournaments channel where, you know, we'll post updates on when we're going to be hosting the next season. So with that being said, guys, please grab some popcorn and sit back, this is going to be a doozy, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey, what is going on guys, and welcome back to Fantasia's non-meta tournament season number one, round number three. Today, I am going up against my buddy Komi Latte, who is a very experienced player and knows a lot of archetypes inside now, so he is definitely going to be a challenge to go up against. Now, starting off with this opening hand, it's looking pretty good. Spellbook of Secrets could potentially get me Blue Boy, but I make a very foolish mistake mistake and I go for the Spellbook of Knowledge. Yeah, that's quite unfortunate, right? So Spellbook of Knowledge, ditching that Spellbook of Power, which to be fair was useless anyway, uh, and then grabbing two draws. Now unfortunately, did not draw into Blue Boy, did not draw into Berry, in fact did not draw into like Chocolate or any other summonable monster. I'm just stuck with this level 5 Kiwi Magician Girl in hand, like what the heck. So that's quite unfortunate. So I go ahead and do the only thing I can do, which is set restage to my back row, because everything else is dead. So Grand Spellbook Tower doesn't have a spellbook on spell uh, spell caster type monster on my side of the field or in my graveyard, and spellbook of fate, I don't control spell caster type monster for it to be live. Same with magician's right hand. So right off the bat, I'm I'm completely screwed. Uh, <laughs> this is not the opening hand that I was looking for. So anyway, uh, as you can see by the length of this video, um, yeah, this video is way shorter than the previous two, and no, it's not because I forgot to record games two and three, I definitely have all of them in here. Uh, this game just went by really quickly, and you'll definitely see uh, who it favors in just a second here. So my opponent, Komi Latte, playing, uh, well, Mech Knights, going ahead, summoning blue, uh, I believe it's the blue one, uh, yep, there we go. Uh, Blue Sky, I believe it is, and now he's going for two searches of Mech Knight monsters. That's, of course, after he had his Ibli, went for the Mermaid, summoned Ibli to my side of the field. Fantastic, right? Okay, so he goes for Morningstar. Morningstar is a huge problem because Morningstar grabs him searches, which is fantastic because in this tournament, Ash Blossom was not legal, so there's, like, no way for me to stop this without, like, effect negation, which I'm obviously not playing, or if I was playing, I, I would not have it in my opening hand, as you can see here. Okay, so he goes for the golden yellow thingy and then goes ahead, banishes a mech knight from the graveyard, pops my set back row, fantastic. I grab free search off of Magician's Restage, but here's the problem here. Uh, I only have an Ibli on my side of the field and he's playing mech knights. Um, he has a lot of uh, potential to just swarm the field and kill me. <laughs> So key to the world legacy is being activated as a banished mech knight from his banished pile uh, back to his hand And then he goes ahead and summons, you know, goes ahead summons it. Uh, I believe this is the uh, Cobalt. Yes, uh, it's like indigo or something like that in English I forget but this is the one that can move its own zones Which is perfect because he can move it aside and then summon purple nightfall right under his morning star and above his Continuous spell card because mech knights can only be summoned if there are two or more cards in the same color as it, which is huge. Now here, my opponent goes ahead, kaijus the Ibli that he gave me, goes for the Gadarla, and wow, that's already a lot of damage on board. Goes for an extra draw, sets that back row so he can summon out yet another Mech Knight monster, and then uses that Crimson Lotus, or 
red something uh, to go ahead and just pop that kaiju he gave me. And wow, looky that, looky here. He has five monsters on the field and just swings, swings for game. Um, yeah, that's not looking too good for me. Mech Knights are definitely a very, very powerful rogue strategy. In fact, if you just obliterated the, the current meta right now, uh, Mech Knight variants would actually be pretty good. Um, so it's, it's not a surprise that in this non-meta tournament, Mech Knights are actually doing very, very well. Now, I know that Mech Knights, if they get started, they can either OTK or they can just easily lock you out of the duel, like completely. They can just completely lock you out and you have nothing that you can do about it because you can activate trap cards, spell cards, monster effects, right, everything. And then they can shift their Mech Knight monsters into uh, whatever column they want to to negate the, your cards that are in said column. So I decide to side in a few copies of Twin Twisters. In fact, I sided all three copies in. I was just phrasing them back row. Uh, took out the magical hath, took out Magician's Defense, those cards won't really be helping me out too much. And then I decide, you know what, this should be okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just go into this. I'm going first anyway, I don't want to overside and then end up with too many cards that I don't want to see in my opening hand, right? So... Going first, uh, I open with pretty decent hand, Chocolate Magician Girl, Berry Magician Girl, I actually have Blue Boy with Knowledge and Master as well, um, so in this situation, Blue Boy would actually not be a bad first turn play, but I don't know what was wrong with me back then. Um, I, I played this several weeks ago, so I'm just gonna blame past me. I go ahead and normal summon Berry Magician Girl, like what the heck am I, what am I searching with this? I search a Kiwi, like what? I already have Chocolate Magician Girl, there's no reason for me to go ahead and summon the Berry here. Um, I know I, like, it just, ugh, I, I don't even know what was going through my mind. I guess I just didn't want to get OTK'd or something, I just, I, I don't know. I send the blue boy with the knowledge, get two draws, get secrets. This is pretty good, right? Not bad. Draw to another copy of Kiwi, which isn't the best thing, as you can tell from the previous game. Kiwi wasn't really helpful in the hand. Um, and now I'm just trying to set up with some of the spellbook cards, right? Fate or maybe Tower. Um, I decide to go for Fate because Fate can go ahead and just give rid of some problematic monsters, which is pretty decent, but you know. Uh, I don't really know. Uh, what I should have done, looking in hindsight at this game, is I should have summoned Blue Boy, went for the search for secrets, secrets could have searched something, Master could have uh, went off, I probably should have searched Grand Spellbook Tower with my secrets, then um, Master could have gone off and you know grabbed another search, potentially Fate, potentially something else. Uh, and then I could have gone from there and Knowledge could have sent that blue boy from my field away and now I would have been left with a clean field and a clean field is actually never that bad against, well, against Mech Knights, especially because I know my opponent is playing Kaijus. Like, I, I went into this game just horribly. I, I don't know what is going on. Please just <laughs> spare me in the comments down below. Uh, I, I played this really, really poorly, as you can tell by this like regret that I have here just looking at this. I'm like, wow, did I really do this? Anyway, he goes off, gives me his kaiju, summons a mech knight to his side of the field, grabs two searches, and then and then summons Phantom Sky Blaster, grabbing him two tokens. Man, Phantom Sky, Sky Blaster is such a good card. Um, anyway, one of the tokens with the Mech Knight is used to summon Morning Star. Morning Star is going to pitch a Mech Knight to go for a search for any World Legacy card, I believe. Uh, so that's a really fantastic card to have. Now he also has another Sky Blaster and a token. He can use him for Link Summons if he needs to. It's very easy for him to go off from here and. Oh man, I just, looking at my opening play just made me cringe so hard. This is not, uh, this is not how you're supposed to play this Magician Girl deck. So anyway, what my opponent is doing here, he's going to go for a search. Whether he searches for, you know, the spell cards, whether he searches for another Mech Knight monster, I don't know. Uh, but I do know that uh, Morningstar provides really good protection for his monsters. Uh, Mech Knight monsters cannot be destroyed by battle unless they're fighting a monster in its same column. So there's that. Uh, okay, so he finally goes ahead, decides he wants the World Legacy Succession, and that is going to be a really good card because he just pitched his Mech Knight monsters to the graveyard. Yeah, that's right, so he can just revive those if he needs to. 
So the first thing he needs to do though is gonna go ahead special summon more mech knights already from his hand, purple nightfall coming out, targeting itself, banishing it, grabbing out of the search for a mech knight, can summon that mech knight out as well. Yeah, purple nightfalls, like the um Purple Nightfall is probably one of those cards that just, f like, brings that entire archetype together. Kind of like Kaleido Chick and Luna Lights or Asinato and Belodius. It's one of the power cards, right? It's one of the things that you want to see, you want to go off, and it really does help. So here we see the red whatever guy, Crimson Lotus, coming out. Um, going to go ahead, banish a Mech Knight, and then pop a card in the same column as it, which is pretty good. Destroyed my uh, Kaiju, that was the only thing protecting me here. And then um, my opponent goes ahead, goes for the Nightmare Phoenix, doesn't go ahead and pop the back row actually, um, which is unfortunate. Uh, I would have just... <laughs> if, for instance, I had something such as uh, the uh, Waking the Dragons, that's what it's called. If I had Waking the Dragons and he popped it, it would have been fantastic, but I think he kind of like was a little wary of it. Um, because at this point in the tournament, people were, you know, talking about their deck lists and things. Although, I tried to keep mine very secret, um, but hey, who knows, right? Somebody might have looked through a replay, seen that, oh, hey, he's playing, uh, Waking the Dragon, signed in. But anyway, he goes ahead, summons all his mech knights, attacks for game, and, and that's that. Th that was a complete obliteration of me, Magician Girls, whoosh, off the face of the planet, and I have definitely learned from my mistakes. Uh-huh, that's right. Definitely go for your setup place first instead of some subpar options. That Barry Magician Girl over the Blue Boy definitely cost me that second game. Anyway, I guess we'll never know how that timeline would have turned out. Anyway guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, or found it helpful, please leave a like, subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content, and leave a comment down below letting me know what I can do to improve. And until next time, take care.